Welcome back everyone. I've got a really cool poster design for you today that's fun, easy to do, and has a lot of applications from t-shirts to mugs to greeting cards. And it took less than 10 minutes to make even before editing. Let me show you how I did it in Affinity Photo 2. When I saw this really cool AI generated image on pixabay.com, I knew I had to do something with it. I thought I would start by putting a bright green background behind this colourful, music-loving gorilla. So, I went to Layers in the menu and selected New Fill Layer. Then, I dragged the New Fill Layer below the gorilla. Next, I went to the colour box in the upper toolbar, clicked on it and changed the colour from white to bright green. You can't see it because there's an off-white background around the subject here. So, I'll try to remove the background by clicking on my Selection Brush tool in the left-hand toolbar and painting over the gorilla as best I can. I'll get in the details clicking the left square bracket key to make my brush head smaller. This took a little bit of time, so I've sped this up a bit so as not to bore you. To get areas I included by mistake, I clicked and held the Option or Alt key while painting to deselect. Next, I clicked on the Refine tool in the top toolbar. I used the foreground mat adjustment to paint away a couple minor spots I missed, but for the most part, the selection looked great. So, I clicked Output to New Layer with Mask. Then I clicked Apply. Wow, I think that looks really good. OK, with the top mask layer selected, I clicked Command or Control J to duplicate the layer. Then, I went to the Artistic Text tool that looks like a capital A in the left-hand toolbar, and I dragged the cursor to size it about the way I wanted it. Next, I typed the letter C and then clicked Enter, then O and Enter, then O and Enter, then L and Enter. Now, there's a drop down immediately to the right of the bullet point icons that's called Paragraph Leading. This controls the spacing between paragraphs. I wanted to get the letters closer together, but the maximum of 288 points wasn't quite enough, so I manually typed in 500, but that was a bit too much. So, I tried 450, and that looked nice. Next, I dragged from the bottom right outward to size the letters from the top to the bottom of my primate friend. OK, now with my word in place, I selected the top gorilla layer and dragged and dropped it onto the text layer. This embedded the image onto the text. You can't see it, so the next thing I did was go to the FX button at the bottom of the layers panel and selected outline and checked the box. I then clicked on the black outline color box and then grabbed the little eyedropper and dragged it over the green area to sample the color. Once sampled, I clicked on it, which turned the outline to the same color green. Next, I raised up the radius slider a bit until the letters were touching. All right, the next thing I did was to select the gorilla layer. Then I went to the layer mask button at the bottom of the layers panel and clicked to add a new mask. With that new mask selected, I then clicked Command or Control i to invert it. Notice that the gorilla disappeared. That's OK. I'll paint it back on by going to my brush panel and selecting a round brush from the basic category. To paint the color back on an inverted mask, I changed the color to white. Then, I clicked on my brush tool in the left-hand toolbar and increased my brush head by clicking the right square bracket key a few times and then I painted over the areas that I wanted to show up. I didn't mean to paint inside the O's, so to erase those areas, I changed my brush head to black and painted back over them. Okay, a couple more things, and then I'll let you go. I wanted the text to stand out a bit more. So, I selected the text layer and then went to the FX button in the Layers panel. I clicked on 3D, checked the box, and raised the slider up to give it some nice 3D shadowing. 
Finally, I changed my mind and decided that the bright green was a little too much. I wanted to go back to all white. So I selected the green fill layer and then used the color wheel to turn it back to white. And then I went back to the FX button, selected outline and turned that color back to white too. Okay, I think that looks really cool if I do say so for myself. All right, that's about it for today. If you learned something and want to see more of this kind of content, please click those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're feeling generous, this channel runs on caffeine. There's a link to buy me a cup of coffee in the descriptions. Not necessary, but certainly appreciated. Have a great day, everyone.